This video is rated T or tickle me pink. Are you guys interested what the best kits in Escape from Tarkov Arena are going to be with this upcoming wipe? Do not worry. I will tell you guys the best kits that you guys should target farm with this upcoming arena wipe and also changes to progression that you're going to want to know about so you can progress the most efficient way possible to those kits. So why don't I shut up? We cut this intro short and get straight into it. The big change you're going to see when you go onto arena is you go to your presets now. Now, previously, you had to progress your presets by playing, let's say, guard to go ahead and unlock argument. Now, you can actually go ahead and target and unlock Chaffee while you're playing guard. And this could go as far as you go ahead and play guard and you want to unlock Ratnik. This can be great if you need to progress down a tree, but you simply hate a kit. This was super, super prevalent if, for example, you wanted to go for a nightmare. In the CQB category, you had to use flesh damage SMGs and rifles all the way to get there to actually get an assault rifle with AP ammunition. So now you can actually go ahead and stay on those earlier game kits that might feel more fluid to play and fit your play style. The one thing you guys need to keep in mind, though, is you do need to follow the tree. So for the example here, let's say I'm only playing guard to go ahead and unlock things. If I unlock Argument, I cannot then go and unlock Ratnik without having Chaffee unlocked. You need to follow the tree still to go ahead and unlock the kits you want. However, now there's something else you really need to know. So you cannot just go ahead and breeze through all the kits right here. You'll see ranked game unavailable, zero out of five presets unlocked. All of the different tiers, now that we have actual tiers, they are time gated now so no longer will you be able to just like get ahead of the curve and out gear every single person these are time gated so let's say you have a lot of time to grind arena you might choose to go ahead and let's say play guard down to knuckles over here because maybe knuckles in your opinion is the best kit in the tier one presets and then after you've got him then you go to unlock ratnik because maybe you want to go further down here and unlock bunker let's say in the tier two section and you could totally do that if you have a lot of time to play keep in mind the progression is about twice as fast more than twice as fast actually as it was when arena launched so you will be leveling significantly faster but now let's say on the flip side you're a contributing member of society you have a job maybe you talk to girls i can't relate to any of those things but you probably don't have as much time to play escape from tarkov as i do you might choose to just go to chappy Ratnik and then keep him unlocked over here and then maybe by the time you finish that tier two will be unlocked we don't really know how far out these time gates are so you're gonna have to kind of decide for yourself how much time you're gonna have committed to arena now that you understand how progression works I still want to go ahead and show you guys some kits that really stand out later down the tree you're not gonna be able to use these today but ones that you might want to target so you're not stuck going through all the kits yourself these ones really stood out to me and I think they'll be some of the most competitive kits for a plethora of playstyles, so let's hop right into that. One thing I do want you guys to remember is that Arena is now updated with the updated recoil and updated armor in the game. Now, so that would radically influence the kits, and kits have been reworked. So, for example, kits that you thought you knew everything in the loadout, they may have different ammunition now, different meds now, and things have been altered. Maybe they'll have different magazines, lower capacity magazines, so they're not all gonna be the same as they were in the past. And this is great. We need to see more balance in Arena and hopefully we get more patches consistently in Arena. The only other thing you need to know is that this wipe did not connect your main account to your Arena account. That'll be coming later down the line. There's also going to be Twitch drops coming soon on March 29th. So if you want to earn kits, earn rubles in Arena, go ahead and pop up my stream. I will be streaming this alive and you can get those for free. I would really appreciate your guys' support. Now let's talk about these kits. One of the first kits that stands out, we're all the way down the tier 3 section, which is the furthest tier in the game, is the Pharaoh kit. Once again, it hasn't really been adjusted much. You'll see that it no longer has a grenade, but it's still rocking 7 and 40 ammunition. The same AK it no longer has the flip of holographic on it anymore because it was bugged in Arena more so than in the main game. I did a whole video on the bugged optic, optic but don't worry. This is just a really well-balanced kit. You have your Ulak, your Gen 4, your AK. This is going to feel like a well-balanced kit from the main game. The Gen 4 
So if you see here, it actually has a level five plate in the front. So we're doing good over there. And it has tier three air mid. You're going to have a level three plate in the back. However, so just look out for that. But Pharaoh overall, it's going to be a pretty good kit. If you just like, you know, your standard assault rifle kit. I just want to briefly mention some of these kits. Like, for example, Calter and Punisher over here. They have really bad armor. They have an HBC armor. And although the loadout itself outside of that is pretty good, I just can't reasonably recommend these guys to you. If maybe you go ahead and look at these kits later on and I never mention them, it's probably because they have some massive drawback, for example, like armor in this instant. So keep that in mind. If maybe you saw a kit that you liked and I never mentioned it, it probably has a big drawback. If that kit still was really calling your name, by all means, go ahead and play it. Have a blast. But I'm just trying to give you guys the most meta kits to target early on. The next kit I want to touch base on is Falcon. So if you've been enjoying the AK-12 in the main game, Falcon is going to be the move. He's also fairly armored, but the AK-12 also comes with 7 and 40 ammunition, which is going to be a nice round. If you saw my whole magazine packing ammunition, this is just a great round to run through 545, and you're going to consistently have that with also high capacity magazines. You'll notice he has a Zuck, but it does not come with the level 6 front plate. It's actually going to have a level 5 front, front plate. He is still very armored. He has a pretty standard good headset from the main game. And I think you guys will really enjoy Falcon if you've been enjoying the AK-12 in the main game. If you've seen my meta weapons video, you guys know the 308 MDR is an absolute machine in the main game right now. And this class right here, Lance, actually has high capacity 308 magazines from the spear and a meta MDR. It is crazy this made it to a kit and I'll see a, probably a lot of you guys are running this kit. The only downside is the armor does come damaged and he's not that armored. If you look at him right here, you'll see he does have a level five front plate, but you get no side plates. You do have tier three air mid with this kit, but the armor does come damaged. Now we don't know exactly what armor in this kit is damaged right now. If I had to guess, it's gonna be the front plate, but we don't know for sure. And with the changes to plates in this game right now, I wouldn't sweat it too much, but this kit is all about the weapon. So if you're loving the throwaway MDR, you might wanna target Lance. Up next, the Brigadier. Now, he's going to have a pretty meta HK416, but it's going to have 5.6A1. He has high capacity magazines as well. He used to have 9.95 in this, but it was changed. This is just going to be your go-to headshot class. If you are comfortable headshotting with a high round per minute weapon, the HK416 is going to be your move. This is your mid-range headshotter. You have a very, very high headshot accuracy. You will absolutely love this kit. Now, if you're, be honest with yourself, if you're more of a Thorax player, Something like that 308 MDR is going to treat you much, much better than this HK. So keep that in mind. I know I'm going to get questions about Mutant. And sure, he does have a meta Mutant right here, but he has horrific armor and he has 762 by 39 PP ammunition. This is going to get stopped a lot by level 4 plates, level 5 plates, and a lot of the arena kits are very, very armored. I realistically cannot recommend this just due to the fact that the ammo is going to get stopped by plates and the low rate of fire and the horizontal recoil make it not very good for going for headshots as well if you absolutely love the mutant by all means go for it but i would not recommend it same thing with squall it has the potential but it's running 10 round magazines so i cannot recommend it and i only brought those up because i know people are going to be interested all right up next is mouse so you'll see mouse he only has one plate in his armor so you effectively have no armor with the changes to the hex grid you have a front plate but you have a semi-meta stubby SA58 with a blast mitigation, which is loaded with M80s. This kit is kind of like the 308 MDR, for example. I think you're going to be better off with the 308 MDR. But if you're just a stand for the SA58, you might choose to go for this instead. But I think overall, the MDR kit is much more meta than the mouse kit currently. With Billy. Billy, so far, is the only class I've seen with a SIG Spear. But he comes with SIG FMJ in this. So he has the small capacity magazines and he doesn't get hybrid ammo. And he's also not very armored. For those reasons, I just don't think it's the best kit. If they gave him maybe 25 round magazines with SIG FMJ, I think it would be insane. Or if they maybe gave him 20 round magazines with hybrid ammunition, I think this would be a very meta kit. And I do think we'll probably see changes to this kit in the future. But at the time of recording this, I can't really recommend it unless you really want to run that spear. Because, I don't know, it's just a cool new weapon, both in real life and in the game. All right, over in the Tier 3 CQB section, you'll see we're going to have quite a few changes in this section. You're not going to be like pigeonholed in such weird loadouts so much in CQB anymore. And it should be much more fun to progress to. You will still have those heavy hitting, heavily armored classes available to you as well. 
And with the changes to recoil, you should be much more potent even in the mid-range engagements, not so much just, you know, barrel stuffing people anymore. So you keep that in mind, you might enjoy CQB if you didn't enjoy it in the past due to its like unwieldy recoil. The first kit that interests me is Split. It is kind of just like a headshot kit with a 5.56 MDR. I think you're better off with the HK, but the reason I recommend this is if you're in the CQB tree, you're very invested in it, then this might be your go-to headshot mid-range kit, but you really didn't have a great option for that previously in CQB, and that just goes to show how much more versatile CQB is going to be now that Arena has wiped. Of course, the one that stands out is Zenith, and you will see he is armored to the teeth, Alton, Redut, AK-105, and the AK-105 is loaded with BT. Not the best round in the world, but you're running a very meta weapon with 60 round magazines, and BT does put people down to the head. I think this is going to be a staple in Arena once again, but we'll have to see how it plays out. The next kit that really catches my eye is Ratatouille. So you get a Defender, Vulcan, and a PKP. Now, if you haven't used the PKP since the recoil changes, it's actually very manageable and very usable. You might seriously be able to find yourself in a position where you post up, lay down, and mow people down, suppress people. I know it sounds like a little corny, a little mill simmy, but this kit might actually be kind of crazy in certain situations. It's not going to be your one-size-fits-all CQB class, Ratatouille by all means is an effective class now. One of the last kits you're going to get is Nightmare. Now Nightmare was like the hidden overpowered class in Arena in the past, but no one wanted to unlock him because he was just a pain in the ass to unlock. Probably one of the worst kits to unlock or one of the sniper kits. The only downside to Nightmare now is they've moved him over to M62 Tracers versus the AP ammunition he used to have. Now this is still a very strong round. However, you're going to be more in like a headshot position with this round. If you run somewhere with like level 6 plates, level 5 plates, you're going to be needing to hit them a lot. So keep that in mind. But I do think this will be a very fun kit to run overall. Lastly, Butcher. With the changes to SA58 and it becoming one of the most meta weapons in the game right now, a standard SA58 with a blast mitigation device, 50 round magazines, even with BCP FMJ, is going to destroy with the blunt armor changes and the air mid changes that came in the latest patch. And you have a Rise T with a Death Shadow Mask underneath it, which is just crazy. I think this kit is going to absolutely fry. If you aim for heads, you're going to do even better with the low tier ammunition right here. If not, then maybe a different kit in the CQB class will fit you better. All right, now we're in the scout tree. And if you like to really be hyper aggressive, move a lot, and you generally get first shots on target, then scout might be the class for you. It's not very armored, but it does come usually the very meta weapons with high tier ammunition usually those weapons do have small magazines is the trade-off and the first kit i want to talk to you guys about is weaver so you guys know weaver it was a massive staple on the first wipe in arena one of the best kits in the entire game and not much has changed it also comes with an sj6 and bs ammunition loaded in the magazines if you guys like scout then you're probably going to be running weaver a lot the kit that also unlocks right after Weaver is very similar to Weaver. I would actually argue it's a little bit worse, but if you like the M4 more and the extra rate of fire, it does come with 995. So you might find a lot of luck with this. I think most people will generally go ahead and favor Weaver just because it's much easier to control recoil. Now up next is Swarm. It's actually an MP5 kit with PBP, which is a very rare ammunition in the main game. It outclasses AP ammunition and it has some pretty insane statistics. You'll see it has 39 penetration. So this generally gets to a level four armor after a shot or two, combined with a massive rate of fire. If you are a movement player and you also like going for heads, this might go crazy, especially on a map like let's say Bay, for example, or the new Chop Shop you might really enjoy Swarm. The last kit I want to mention is Vimple. Now, Vimple actually has 7N42 ammunition, which is a new ammunition in the 9x21 caliber, and it is insane. So if you just want to try this out, have a good time with it. I can't say for sure how meta it's going to be because this ammunition is so hard to get in the live game right now. I haven't been able to test it, but according to the statistics on the wiki, it should be a phenomenal round. So you might want to go ahead and just have some fun with Vimple. I honestly can't recommend a chopper just due to the fact that it has really bad ammunition. Uh, it does have an RSH-12, which can be a lot of fun to utilize. Reaper comes with FMJ, so if you really like the MP7, then sure, you could use this to go for headshots. However, this kit has been nerfed heavily. When it got buffed up to 40 round magazines with AP ammunition, it was a little bit too strong, and now I think they've undertuned it a little bit. 
Uh, Vampire is running flesh damage. He does have a backup black tip ammunition, but it's just a little bit of a, a goofy kit, and I don't think m the majority of you guys will enjoy him. All right, last but not least is Marksman. So people really hated progressing Marksman in the past, and hopefully the changes to progression will help with leveling Marksman. Now, the left side is mostly DMRs, and the right side is mostly bolt-action rifles with a secondary. The trade-off here is you get more armor with the DMRs generally, and you also get a semi-automatic weapon. So that does seem a little overpowered when you phrase it like that, especially considering most engagements you're going to have here. At most, they're going to be like 100 meter engagements. If you're lucky, most of them will actually be under that. So I think most people will generally fit towards the DMR play style more. You'll see consistently all of these kits now have trim at all, which is going to make it easy for them to hold ADS, hold down angles for the entire match, and then also consistently pull off flanks and move into favorable positions to actually utilize their DMRs and their sniper rifles. So Marksman has gotten a massive, massive buff with this weapon arena, and it might be time to finally go down this tree. The first one is Hector, who has a 5.5 A1, plenty of it, and a CPC rig, so he's actually fairly armored. The only real drawback that he has here is he doesn't have a helmet, but this is just your go-to DMR head tapping class. Up next is Calm. This is a very effective class, although you're much less armored than Hector, but you're going to be running an SUDS and a very meta one at that loaded with PS ammunition. So if you can keep your range here, you'll be putting people down to the thorax, no problem with Calm. You'll see in the Marksman class, we're actually going to mention a lot of these classes because they all do make a lot of sense and they have a kind of logical progression behind them. And I don't think many of them are really going to steer you the wrong way. Up next is Overlord, who actually gets fairly armored with a slick. Once again, no helmet, but he has a G28 with a 1x4x, which I think is going to be super nice in Arena. A 6x optic is just a little bit too much unless you're like up in the tower overwatching the chopper, for example. You'll see he has M62 and also a trim at all, which will help him stay ADS much, much more. Also consistently pull off flanks, which I think will be a ton of fun to play. If you're more of a tactical player, you have good aim, you have patience, you have trigger discipline, Overlord might be very fun to play. Over on the right hand side of the tree, we'll start first and foremost with Click. A lot of people actually enjoyed using Click a lot due to the SR2M. It was just very effective. The SV98 is nothing to write home about. It does have SMB ammunition, but just not a phenomenal build you click heads with this thing they will die no matter what they're wearing unless they ricochet the bullet but the sr2m gives you a lot of potential to make things happen you have an hpc rig by all accounts this is not good armor but at least you have armor which we won't have with all of the bolt action rifles now we get to the really fun kit gay so he has the axmc with 338 ap ammunition now this is the bolt action 338 you'll see he also gets a little bit of armor and a 5.7. A 5.7 is one of the best pistols in the game right now, if not the best pistol in the game. I know there's like some room for if you want to have like an automatic or if you want something heavy hitting like a revolver. But all around, I would say the general player base really favors the 5.7 right now, and it is loaded with SS190. This kit is having a massive glow up. The only downside really is you don't get a headset, which I feel like you won't have great information for always making moves. But I think this kit will be a ton of fun to play, and I might be going for this one myself. And then after that, you unlock Lich. Now, Lich comes with basically no armor, and he has 338 Lapua Magnum UCW. So that is not that good of a round, unfortunately. However, this is a semi-automatic 338, so you may be able to do a lot of damage. I just, I don't think this kid is going to be worth targeting versus going ahead and keeping gaze. But that's just my opinion. I know a lot of you guys are going to be interested in this. So I mentioned that I would be pretty interested in running Gaze. For me, the kits that interest me the most are Gaze. I love the idea of being able to run 338 AP, aiming for Thoraxes, and really having influence with a single shot on the map and having a lot of presence. The next kit that really catches my attention is Overlord over Ruby, actually. And you guys might find that odd, but I really just think the sight profile of the Elkin with the 1x4X is going to be much better than that 6X on the kit behind it. It's also fairly armored, and the G28 is actually better than the RSS in the main game right now. In the scout tree, nothing really catches my attention. Of course, Weaver and Grumpy are going to be extremely strong in almost every single engagement. However, Swarm looks like fun. I would really like to try this out. I have a very high headshot accuracy rate in the main game as well as an arena, which led to me having such a high KD. It would be fun to run this kit with such a high rate of fire 
huge high capacity magazines and black tip ammunition. I personally have never been a massive fan of CQB, however Ratatouille is definitely standing out. I've been loving running the PKP and the PKM in the main game and I actually have a video kind of like a follow up to Karma Cuts, can you use LMGs in Escape from Tarkov video but using the PKP and the PKM with my own squad in some tactical gameplay. That might sound a little corny to you guys, but I just think this will be a lot of fun to use. A few beers in, shooting 7.62 by 54R with 100 round mags, I'm gonna have a blast with this. And then finally, in the Assault Tree, the kit that really stands out to me the most in the Assault Tree is Brigadier. I love going for headshots, I've been loving the HK in the main game, and I think this is gonna be a, like a standard go-to for me. However, I also do see the potential in Lance. The 308 MDR is just so strong right now, and I could see myself running this kit quite a lot as well. And lastly, Falcon. Now, although Falcon is not really at the end of the tiers, and by all counts, he doesn't have the best kit, I have just been enjoying the AK-12 so much in Tarkov right now, and I'm very interested to see how this kit performs. Similar to the HK going for those headshots, I think this is a little bit more well-rounded than the HK if you miss those headshots, and it could be a really fun kit, but it might be a miss. But for me, those are the kits that I'm really interested in getting myself. Let me know what kits you guys are going to be going for. And if you guys need a team to play Escape from Tarka Arena with, make sure to join my Discord. I'm always sitting in there hanging out in unlocked channels, getting to know you guys, shooting the shit with you guys. And I'd personally love to run some matches with you guys. That'll be linked in the description down below. And just an added thank you. And thank you for making it to the end of this video, guys. I really cannot say how much I appreciate your guys' support. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to check out this video. Let me know what else you guys want to see, arena-wise, content-wise, in the comments down below. I hope you all have an amazing day, and expect tier lists for Arena to come out shortly.